Good morning. Nice to be with you again and thank you for your patience over the last uh, five weeks. Always enjoy. At one time we were thinking Hank of coming to Kelty, but uh, since you have been an offer, we could have offered in the house in Glasgow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> we're turning to John 16. John 16, and we'll read from verse 1. John 16, from verse 1. These things I have spoken to you, that you should not be made to stumble. They will put you out of the synagogues. Yes, the time is coming that whoever kills you will think that he offers God service. These things they say will do to you, because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things I have told you that when the time comes you may remember that I told you of them. But these things I did not say to you at the beginning because I was with you. But now I go away to him who sent me and none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of, of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has a mine. Therefore, I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. That is the word of the Lord. Just a few weeks ago, following one of the evening Zoom services, we had a little discussion concerning different subjects that might well be worth having a look at. Uh, and one of these requested subjects was the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm very, very aware that in some churches and meetings that you go to and you say you're going to speak in the Holy Spirit, you see panicked faces looking back at you, probably saying, what on earth is he going to say now? Sadly, over the last, well, it must be 50 years now, there are some things that have happened and have been tagged as the work of the Holy Spirit that, quite frankly, uh, were not. And we won't go into that this morning. But there are some extreme views as to the work and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And so, I hope, I hope this morning 
that it will be somewhat balanced and helpful. The Lord was very aware that his earthly ministry was drawing to a close. He knew what would happen and he knew that fairly soon he would leave the disciples here on earth and go back into heaven. For the disciples, that must have been very difficult to take because they had hoped that the Lord would set up a kingdom and they probably thought they would help him run it. And all of a sudden, the narrative changed and the Lord would face something very different. That would be the cross. Thankfully, the grave could not hold him, and he rose the third day. But while he was here on earth, the Lord was preparing the disciples for the ministry that lay ahead of them. And he made the promise on several occasions of the Holy Spirit who would come, who would indwell them who would empower them. And so first of all, I want us to consider the promise this morning. It is for your good that I am going away because unless I go away, the Holy Spirit or the Advocate will not come. In John 15 verse 26, Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit comes, whom I send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify of whom? Not himself. He will testify of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this must have been a measure of comfort for those disciples. And in the verse that we've, we've quoted, the word another, a normal word for us, but it says a rich meaning in the original language of the New Testament. There are two words that are translated other or another. One means one of the same kind, the other means one of a different kind. And in saying that he was going to send the disciples another comforter, the Lord Jesus was saying this, that he was going to send a comforter of the same kind. A comforter like him, a comforter who would guide them. And this comforter would not be with them for a short period of time, but he has been with believers ever since and will be until the church is ejected supernaturally at the rapture. So the Comforter is not only with us, if we know the Lord as our Saviour, the Comforter is in us. Why? To enable us to live the life that glorifies the Lord Jesus Christ. That is a word of comfort indeed that we are not left as orphans as the Bible says but we have one who is with us and that changes the game if we grasp something 
of the wonder of the person of the Godhead who is within us, who leads and guides us. So what was the purpose of this comforter? The Holy Spirit is going to do much more than just teach us about the things of Christ. He is going to take the things that Christ has done for us and will do and make them ours. John 14 verse 23 very interesting Jesus said anyone who loves me will obey my teaching or my words my father will love them and we will come unto them and make our home with them and so all three persons of the Godhead have a part in our Christian life and experience That doesn't fill our hearts. Then I'm sure there is something we need to do. I remember being in a, a meeting many years ago in Coat Bridge, where I was born and brought up. We had gone to a uh, gospel concert I don't know if many of you remember this name uh, Len McGee and it was in <clears throat> one of the local churches uh, and the gospel concert went ahead and then what followed was quite frankly chaos and I was very confused I was not long a believer and I walked out and I made sure from that day on I would try to look into the work and ministry of the Holy Spirit so that I know what the Bible says, or at least some of it. The Spirit of God is not one who creates chaos. There is order and dignity. What are some of the things that the Spirit does? Well, firstly, He convicts us of sin. None of us would have become believers but for the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our hearts. And I'm sure you remember when He was speaking to you and you were probably as determined as I was that I was going to say no. But the Spirit of God prodded and pushed until one evening it became very clear the option that was needed to be taken <clears throat> and that option was to say yes or no to the Lord Jesus Christ and I said yes I trust everyone here knows the Lord as their saviour but if you feel uneasy or challenged by anything that you read in the Bible or anything that is said from any platform, pulpit, whatever you want to call it, if you're being challenged, it's the work of the Spirit. Mm. What happens when we're born again? Well, we're baptized by the Spirit into the body of Christ. into the body of Christ no longer alone and so those of us here today who are believers we all have the same spirit within us but and it's a big but are we allowing him To work in us, to change us, 
to use us for the glory of God. It always worries me when I hear in any situation people who focus on the the ministry of the Spirit and everything is the Holy Spirit, very little about the Father or the Son. That's a huge red flag. Because according to Scripture, one of the the ministries of the Holy Spirit is to point us to Jesus. He doesn't take the glory. He points us to Jesus. Now as believers there are certain things that we can do. We can grieve the Spirit of God. If we live in a manner that's not pleasing to God or not according to his word, the Holy Spirit is grieved. We don't lose him. We can't lose our salvation. We're saved once and for all according to the scriptures. But the nearness of our walk with the Lord our usefulness begins to stutter if we grieve the Holy Spirit. We can quench the Spirit of God. And I've done that. And it lasted a long, long time. But I would warn you, if you go down that route and you keep going down that route one, of, one day the Lord will take your feet from you. And you'll make it very clear where you are and what you've done. But then also we can be used to serve God and we have to do that effectively we have to do that in the power of the Holy Spirit and we can only do that and it's a bit of a chain reaction really we can only do that if we are walking in step with the Spirit that's why there is a great need for us to spend time studying the Word of God And you might think, well, I don't understand it all. Well, neither, neither do I. But each time you study, there's another brick in the wall. And if you want to know a good source of study that doesn't take much of your time, I'll give you the address for the Emmaus Bible School in Liverpool. Excellent. But as of now, the courses are free. If you do them at home. So we are also told that there are gifts that the Holy Spirit gives us. Gifts of service. And as I've often said, and I repeat myself, The foot, the ground at the foot of the cross is level. There is nobody away up here and someone else away down here. The pastor in the biggest church in the world is no more important than the cleaner of the smallest church in the world. And if anyone tells you differently, it's a disgrace. Quite frankly, we are all one. None more important than the other. Many gifts. But we are servants. That was the role that the Lord Jesus took as he washed the disciples' feet. I wonder, would we be willing to wash each other's feet this morning? Would we? 
Don't worry, I'm not going to ask you. <laughs> you wouldn't want to wash mine, that's <laughs> Anyway, the time's almost gone. What the Father devised, the Son accomplished, and the Holy Spirit communicates these things to us. Three in one. And I think what we need to remember is, and I'll say this very quickly, when the Lord Jesus ascended back into glory, the disciples only had the Old Testament scriptures. They didn't have the benefit of what we have. And that's why for them, this was a major thing. It's also a major thing for us. Never ever forget that the ministry of the Spirit is primarily to point men and women to Christ, to convict of sin, righteousness and judgment, but for believers to provide comfort. The time's gone. Remember the story of a man who was rushing to his place of work and he turned a corner and he ran right into a man carrying a grandfather clock, flattened his back. And as he sat up, he said to the man, why can't you wear a wristwatch like anyone else? Time is gone. All that Christ has procured for us makes Christ a reality within us. Can you imagine trying to live the Christian life on your own? Satan would crush us within minutes. And so, maybe you're here this morning and with this I really am finished and you've never experienced the joy of sin forgiven. But you can now. Maybe you've never trusted Christ as Saviour for salvation. And he's speaking to you now, but you must make the first step towards him. And for believers, may our prayer be something very simple. Welcome, Holy Spirit, we are in your presence. Fill us with your power live inside of me. Let's pray. <coughs> Father God, we thank you for the provisions that you have made for us. We thank you for your dear Son, our Saviour. We thank you that if we have trusted him, our sins are forgiven, past, present, and future. Lord Jesus, we thank you for dying for us. We thank you for the promise that you gave us that one day you will come to take us home. <clears throat> Precious Holy Spirit, we ask that you will indeed work within us. And if you do, enable us to give all the glory to our precious Redeemer. In his name. Amen. Amen.